Hello everyone, let's solve the AP Calculus AV 2016 free response question 3 together. So, um, let's get started. Uh, over here we have a figure of the piecewise function f, so the graph is f. And for the range from negative 4 to 12, the function g is defined by g of x is equal to the integral of f of t with respect to t from 2 to x. So now we um, know that the, the graph is f, not g, so we shouldn't confuse this two. So for question A asks if g has a relative minimum, relative maximum, or neither at x is equal to 10. So uh, in order to solve this question, we have to recognize that g of x, uh, g prime of x is equal to f of x. Uh, although college board does not require you to prove it, but we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to uh, explain things better. So let's use the fundamental theorem of calculus, also the FTC. So, um, over here we can, we can first of all let f of x equal the integral of f of x, and this is interchangeable with f prime of x is equal to f of x. Now, gx is equal to the integral from 2 to x, ft dt. So, g prime of x is equal to d over dt times 2 to x ft dt, which is equal to d over dt f of x from 2 to x, which is equal to f, oh, sorry, this should be f of t. So, f prime of x minus f prime of 2. This is a constant. Uh, f of 2 is equal to a constant, so f prime of 2 is equal to 0, and f prime of x is equal to ft. So now we have just proved the relationship of g prime of x equaling to f of t. So uh, for the relative minimum and maximum, firstly, they have to satisfy that g of 10 g prime of 10 is equal to 0 which is satisfied however the second condition for relative maximum is that the second derivative uh, d over dx squared will be larger than 0 if it's a maximum and uh, if it's a minimum and d over dx will be the second derivative will be smaller than zero at that point if it is a maximum. However, we can see that uh, so f at uh, x is equal to 10, we can see that over here, uh, the second derivative of g of x, which is equal to the first derivative of f of x is undefined because uh, f prime of x will be equal to the slope the, um, at that point. And we can see that the tangent f, f is, uh, x is equal to 10 is undefined. So we can say that, no, it does not have a relative max. or relative minimum. And there's the other way to think of this question is that uh, over he here in at x is equal to 10, we can like, examine the numbers around it. So from x is equal to 8 to x is equal to 12, um, f, of, f of x is always negative. which means that 
j prime of x is always negative. So that that is uh why we can like say that it's not a relative maximum or minimum because it will mean that the slope is like always decreasing instead of like coming to a a point where the slope is equal to zero. Now let's move on to question three B. So now the question is asking if the graph of G has a point of inflection at x is equal to 4. So in our previous uh, question 3a, we have proved that uh, g prime of x is equal to f of x, and g prime prime of x is equal to f prime of x. So we have also learned that for, let's say, an arbitrary function, uh, uh, arbitrary function a of x, if it needs to have a point of inflection at x is equal to c, then a prime prime of x will need to change sign at x is equal to c, and a prime prime of x is equal to zero is not sufficient evidence. Not enough. So now we can analyze our graph at x is equal to 4. So uh, we can observe the slope, the slope of f of x, uh, because that will be equal to, the slope of f is like equal to f prime of x, which is equal to g prime prime of x. So we can use that to determine if it's a point of inflection. So before x is equal to 4, we can see that slope of f or the uh, second derivative of g is equal to a negative. And then at here, after x is equal to 4, the slope of f is equal to positive. So this is why we know that uh, g of x changes sign when x is equal to 4. So it is a point of inflection. So we have written down the answer. Yes, it is a point of inflection at x is equal to 4 because the second derivative of g of x or the first derivative of f of x changes from negative to positive. Some of you may notice that College Board's answer is a bit different, but it's essentially the same because it says that it is increasing for this interval, which means that the um, slope of f of x or, f, uh, or the second derivative of x has a positive slope when something is increasing and when something is decreasing it just means that it has a negative slope so uh, in essence it's the same answer but we express it differently now let's move on to part c in part c we are required to find the absolute minimum value and absolute maximum value of g on the, this interval so over here we just need to uh, make a candidate's test and the um for if uh, for finding the candidates on a candidate test first you will find like the endpoints of the function and then we will find uh when something is uh has a when something has a derivative equal to zero over here it's when f of x is equal to zero so we have these candidates for the candidates test as well some of them uh, before we actually do the candidates test we can actually eliminate some of the choices because we see that 10 is not a absolute minimum or an absolute maximum and 2 is also not an absolute maximum or absolute minimum. So now we just need to um, evaluate four candidates. 
So let's do the candidates test. There's x and there's g of x. And our candidates once again are negative 4, negative 2, 6, and 12. So let's just start off with 6 because 6 is easy. Well, the integral from g uh, from x is equal to 2 to x is equal to 4 of f of t dt will just be the area underneath the graph in this section. So it will just be 1 half base 4 height 4, which is 8. And we can evaluate it for 12 as well. Mm, but if we are observant enough, we can notice that for 12, this area and this area will cancel out and equal to 0. So we just only need to evaluate this shaded area, which is 1 half times base times height, which is equal to negative 4. Now we can evaluate the answer, the values for negative 2. So uh, we actually need to flip the signs because we'll, if we are finding 2 to negative 2 f of t dt, it will be negative, uh, the negative of the integral from negative 2 to 2 and f t dt. And we just can also uh evaluate it this region will also give a value of eight and we need to add a negative sign so it'll be negative eight and then lastly we can um evaluate it for here but this area and this area would cancel out so we just need to evaluate the triangle the net for the net area which will be equal to negative 4. So after the candidate's test, we can find out the absolute minimum is uh, equal to negative 8, and the absolute maximum is equal to 8. Now let's finally solve part D. So uh, over here, we should find the intervals where g of x is smaller or equal to 0. So g of x is just equal to the net area. So let's just divide it into before 2 and after 2. So over here, we just need the area to be negative. So at first, the area is positive. And then over here, the air area is net area is decreasing. But the net area is still positive until it reaches 10, where the net the net area cancels out. The net area cancels out. And at, at 10, uh, g of x is equal to 0. Then we will see, see that the uh, area continues to decrease. And so, first of all, we know that uh, for the interval 10 to 12, um it says g of x is smaller or equal to zero nextly uh for the uh size that is lesser than two actually we need a positive net area f uh like on the graph for g g of x to be smaller because than zero because uh over here we have proved this thing which shows that uh, we actually need to flip the sign. So now when we evaluate the graph, we can see that at first it is positive and positive. And even when it goes like negative beyond the graph, the net area is still positive. So when we flip over the sign, g of x will be negative. So it's also and the interval from negative 4 to 2.